Morris Doyle from William Grant. Thank you very much for coming to the Marketing Breakfast uh, this morning. Um, the first question for you is, um, your global marketing office is based in Dublin, which is fantastic. So um, how and why was this decision made and what could we do to get other um, global marketing offices to, uh, to come to Ireland? Yeah, very good. First of all, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, we set up a global marketing office in um, Dublin about two and a half years ago, and we set up for three reasons. First of all, it's because we're looking to grow our non-Scotch brands. Um, our Scotch brands are marketed out of London. We wanted a separate office for our non-Scotch brands, such as Hendrix or, or Soda Jerry. Um, so that was one reason. And um, the second reason, no surprise, uh, there were some significant financial incentives with corporation tax uh, to be based in Ireland. And it's very important that Ireland stays competitive. Um, and the third reason is we bought Tullamore Dew, which is the second largest Irish whiskey brand in the world. So that meant uh, an increased rationale for being in Ireland. So that's why we're here. Um, I think things that can be done to uh, attract more businesses into Ireland are, first of all, to stay competitive. I think it's very important that Ireland stays competitive as a base, because the more competitive it is, the more incremental uh, decisions will go in Ireland's favour that will build employment and growth um, and, and exports. Um, so that would be, I think, the, the most important advice, I'd say stay competitive. Um, what's your view then on the uh, report that's come from the Department of Health recently recommending sponsorship uh, of, sport and other, by, of sport and other large events by the drinks industry should be phased out? In Ireland, we're, we're uh, on the board of ABFI, the Alcohol Beverage Federation of Ireland, uh, and we play a, an important role with them. And I think it's important to say that uh, it's important to look for balance. So there are things more that the alcohol industry as a whole needs to be doing to combat misuse um, of alcohol. And specifically, I mean people who binge drink um, or people who under the age of 18 um, will drink. Um, but it's a collective responsibility. It's a responsibility to retailers and it's also a responsibility um, of individuals as well. Um, but the balance is that I think that as long as um, alcohol brands are marketed responsibly to responsible adults, I think that's absolutely fine. Um, so for me, um, I don't have an in principle problem with people sponsoring the right type of properties uh, as long as it's done in a responsible way to responsible adults. Um, as an international marketer, then, what's your assessment of the state of brand Ireland at the moment? Um, I think, um, I, I think uh, there is upside and there's a short-term challenge. Um, undoubtedly, the image of Ireland over the past two or three years has taken a bit of a, a, bit of a knock. If you're an international marketer um, working in different, in different markets, you read about Ireland, scandal-ridden, managing to be broke and expensive at the same time. So I think we need to look at repairing and within the professional community, the image of Ireland. But I think for consumers, undoubtedly Ireland uh, is still a positive. Um, it stands for things like sociability, a genuine people, um, a natural and spoiled countryside. Um, these are things which I think are, uh, we can market even more. And I think we can build on some more um, fundamental views of being Ireland rather than just the stereotypes of kind of pubs and whatever. Um, so I think our sense of community, our sense of spirituality, um, and also our cultural heritage. These are things which I think we can do to dial up to make the brand of Ireland even more positively received abroad. Is there anything we can do to move quickly beyond this broken, and expensive image that uh, is out there at the moment? Uh, well, I think the more that Ireland factually stay, gets more and more competitive, and that's clearly happened over the past two or three years, that will help. Um, I think it's been a, the last year, I'd say, has been a good year, though, probably for Brand Island in terms of the visits, in terms of the President of the USA, Vice Premier of China, the Queen coming over. So I think more things like that can market Ireland more positively abroad. And just on the uh, being sort of expensive, if you like, are we still expensive? Are we more competitive? How are we comparing to other countries now? We're definitely getting significantly more competitive. But when we started over here for uh, two and a half years ago, for example, um, a lot of costs were direct uh, comparison with the UK were 40% more expensive than London. And then that's come down, and I would say maybe 10, 15% are more expensive now than London. Um, so good progress has been made, but I think more that can be done. Because, the more, again, the more competitive Ireland is, the more jobs um, that we will get here. And finally, one question we ask all of our, um, all, all of our guests is, what's the most important you've, lesson you've learned professionally uh, over the course of your career? The most important lesson that I've learned professionally is I would describe it as listen to in a voice. Um, marketing is a blend of the art and science, a blend of head and the heart. 
Um, there's been a number of times in the past, though, where I've listened solely to my head. I've listened to everybody telling me it's absolutely the right thing to do when there was something inside me telling me this isn't right. Um, the couple of times I ignored my uh, inner voice were expensive, so I've learned never to do that again. So my lesson would be listen to your inner voice. Mara, thank you very much.